Hello and welcome to Elite Dangerous. In this episode we're going to have a look at how to start straight into combat. So we're going to we're going to start with our start ship and we're just going to go fighting. That's all we're going to do. Um, and to show that we're going to go into options and we're going to clear my save data and we're going to start afresh. So Lambert links, okay. Now, if you bought Horizons, you'll have this one here. Uh, Signwinder. It's kitted out for service operations with a two-ton cargo hold and a vehicle bay equipped. Now, we're not going to start with that one. We're just going to go to the standard, which, when we have a look at it, is just a stock Signwinder. You don't have a a vehicle bay fitted and as you can see if we look at location this one gives you a location yeah on the new commander it just says a random federal system now every time I've restarted this game I've started in I think it's LT3446 or some something like that um, so I've always started in the same system. Now, I don't know whether that is the server you're on. So if you're on a different server, maybe you'll start in a different starting system. I don't know that one. Um, also, what I would like to say is, I would recommend a flight stick. Now, the flight stick that I'm using is a Thrustmaster X. It's a PlayStation 3 and PC compatible flight stick uh, you can get it for around about 30 30 pounds to 45 pounds depending on where you shop now because it is designed for the PlayStation 4 3 sorry means that it's meant you can play it on your lap now I'm playing this game on a flat screen TV uh, through my PC and it is situated on my lap, the joystick. Now, it's got 12 programmable buttons on it, which isn't enough for this game, but it's enough to get by on the game. Especially if you're just starting off. You don't want to fork out £140 or £100 for a flight stick and then you realise that you don't like the game. But as a start-off joystick... 30 to 45 pounds it's a it's a pretty good one it it, it worked for me um but if we go into options and controls you'll notice that i'll uh, if I scroll down you notice that a few of my setups have double buttons so the 10 and the 9 button are situated on the front of the throttle so therefore they're my link buttons i press them and then I've got another 6, 8 buttons to play with so doubling up is quite important with this joystick um, and there's also, ah yes um, if you're just starting off in this game one thing I would suggest is these two especially if you're going to go into fighting linking these two to a button on your joystick or anything pretty quick where you can get to them is a must is a must because this these two it's needed you're going to need to use these two you can go through it's you can go through the menus on your ship to do the same things but it's just to keep your eye on the ball link these to some some buttons that you can use um, what else would I suggest that you uh, link ah yes um, if I scroll down also um, if we go out of there so using a, a shield cell or a chaff launcher as you can see I've I've put these two buttons so therefore when we're in 
in the ship. We don't have to waste a fire slot to equip uh, the launches. So it's things like this is a good way of getting a little bit of an edge. Um, so yeah, I suggest a joystick. I suggest a joystick, and I suggest especially linking things like this to uh, the joystick it saves taking your eye off onto the keyboard I know once you get used to the buttons themselves you'll be able to press them but like I said I'm using this sat on a settee um, and I've got the joystick on my lap my keyboard is to the side with my mouse so it's a lot easier to have things set up on the joy on the joystick itself uh, so things like that but I suggest a joystick um, I've read on the forums that a 360 pad is usable especially if you config your buttons to whatever suits you you, you, you suit you do things to suit yourself so back to the main menu um, I suggest as well if you're going to do this way of starting have a little go at the training first especially the um, the combat training ones have a go make sure that you're comfortable because like I said we, we use, we're going from the bog standard ship straight into a, a fighting a fighting stance we're going straight into fighting isn't we're not going to be trading uh, we're not going to be taking any missions we're just going to go straight to a system where I know there's a resource extraction site and we're just going to go straight into fighting uh, back to the main menu also what I suggest if you're new to the game go solo play now it stops it's easier for you to get the bounty paid off for you to get the bounties when you don't have other commanders also fighting for the same bounty and the chances are they'll be in a better ship than you are so they'll get the bounty because one thing I noticed was I was just collecting bounties and two commanders turned up in a wing and we were fighting the same ships now since when they turned up because they were using things like beam lasers I think it classed them as getting the last the last hit in on the ship so therefore I never got paid anything I think we took out two Adacondas and a Cobra uh, not a Cobra a Python and I got nothing for those three kills while they were there because we were fighting the same ship. Now, when you're just with the computer, it the chances are you will get paid. I've, I've never not got paid for destroying a ship. Um, so go solo play if this is your first time in doing this. So we'll go on solo. So here we are in the cockpit. Now, first things we'll look at is obviously if you look to your left, you have your navigations and transactions and contacts and things. This is more like your your radio and where you're going to go and how to plot your course and stuff like that, which we'll look in. Um, as you can see, there's a system maps and galaxy map. If we go into the system map, now this system is a is a pretty big system. This this system um, I wouldn't suggest I wouldn't suggest trying to farm because I think the chances are if we look here um, we, that one yeah they're just rocky rings on that one this one's icy ring so I don't think there's any extraction sites in this system but one problem with this system is when you we jump into this system we come near this Sun here now the stations that you'll want to use in this system are over here and they end up being uh, there a hundred a hundred thousand light seconds away which takes about maybe 10 minutes to get from jumping in over to these stations so if there was any extraction points on these rings it'd be pointless because we could only go here and even though there is an outfitting and restock and the black market in this one 
you get better equipment in these. So this system's not ideal. Um, yeah, this one just has icy rings as well. So let's we go exit. So like I said, that's that's on it. Transactions. That's where your your bounties and things like that will be going. Contacts. So you can request docking from here. Yeah. So that's that. If you head up the other way, this is more of your your status your rankings what's fitted to your ship and where you've got your power supply priority set at now thrusters and frame shift to one now this your priorities are which the higher the number the quicker they will shut down so if I said my cargo hatch, I'm not bothered about it. It's using power. I'm not going to be using it while I'm fighting, so therefore I can put that to three. Now, if my output of the the output of my generator drops below the 81% mark, the first thing that will get turned off is the cargo hatch. It will not touch the lasers or the power distributor. So you set that up. At the moment, with this being a basic ship, we don't really have to bother with with them at the moment. Fire groups. Now, if we set that to two. Now, again, we've got a basic bog standard ship, so we won't go too much into this at the moment. But if we had things like a chaff launcher or a, a kill warrant scanner, they would be here as well, and we'd have to designate a fire button for each of those so things like a chaff launcher or a shield cell bank which I sh showed earlier on I don't have to put them on to a fire button because I've already designated a specific button for those so we can free that up so we don't have to create create more like more fire groups as we go so it just saves a lot more space and it makes it look a bit neater inventory we've got nothing next is functions and in your functions you'll get your basic uh, command ship commands so if you haven't or you don't know the buttons for your landing gear you can come into this panel and deploy your landing gear or retract it same as your cargo scoop if you don't know the button it is quicker to come into this panel than it is going into the options menu and finding it uh, beacon I have never used this so I don't know what that actually does silent running now silent running is a good way of being undetected so smuggling things like that if you can get further enough away put on silent running it stops your heat signal but your heat of the ship will increase so you'll have to disperse it using using heat sinks and things like that so that's usually good if you're trying to sneak in and out of stations external lights because you have lights if I put it on ooh so you have lights if you go back turn them off so that's just some lights uh, flight assist now I mainly leave it on there's an advanced way of fighting where you flip it you can switch it switch it on and off using buttons um, again it's another thing now with set up to the joystick if you want to get good as such I don't really turn it off that much if ever so uh, rotational correction turret weapon mode uh, we don't have any turrets so I can't do anything with that at the moment but yeah when you get a bigger ship and you get some turrets you'll be able to switch where their fire arc is um, pre-flight checks with us just starting a new game we're going to have to do a pre-flight check this just stops it so after the initial one we won't get them again but if you if you want them on you can you can obviously turn this on but it's just a waste of time after the initial one 
report crimes against me. Now, turning this on, if a ship shoots you, then it will automatically be reported to the authorities and it will gain a bounty. I think originally this was set to off, so maybe you would like to turn that one on if that's the case. Orbit lines, these are just lines when you're in super cruise, you will see them. I've played with this with them off and I prefer them on, but that's just a preference. It's up to you if you if you like the look of them on or you want them off. Uh, interface brightness, obviously you can turn down the computer screen brightness. Gun sight mode, leading. Now, as you're fighting, you will notice a, a lead target. Uh, sensor scale, logarithmic, or linear. Now, I think that's got something to do with the the range markers on the radar. Uh, logarithmic makes it look so you get your lines and each line will be slightly closer to the previous line than the previous line so the distance between each line decreases but the actual physical space is still the same so it will be one mile between each line or ten miles between each line even though the the final line is very close to the previous line it's still ten miles between the lines while linear is it's just the same all the way through. Reboot and repair that is in case one of your modules shuts down um, you can swing across and you can reboot and repair and self-destruct is self-destructed if you wanna destroy your ship for some reason I, I don't know why you would. So there that's the basics of the cockpit but in the bottom right the three bars with the pips underneath them that's your power distributor now it's currently set up with two pips in each one. The SYS is your systems, that's your shield generator and things like your heat sinks and your chaff launchers. If there's no power in, in that bar, then you will not be able to recharge your shields or set off chaff or anything like that. The middle one is the engines. The, the more pips in that, the faster you go, the more the battery recharges, the more boost you can do. The final one, WEP is your weapons. Obviously the more the more pips you have in that one, the faster it recharges, therefore the more you can shoot. And again you'll see that flipping around left, right and centre in the systems, engines and weapons as we go along. So now I would like to go into the Galaxy map. We're going to pick so this is the galaxy map. It's uh, quite hectic. So when you first start, always go to this tab up the top, the second tab next to the info, and fastest routes. Make sure that is clicked because for some reason I don't think that is a standard set so you have to click it um, again we have our colors federations red empires blue alliance green and independence yellow this is about so that is an independent system and as you can see we are in a federation system and from this you can switch to realistic where it turns them all off and you can do them um, manually so if you want to just fly around but only want to know all the federation systems just click on the federation one and that will bring that up power play now that's again this is something for another time I don't really bother with power play so I can't really say much about it at the moment. Options, so sure the grid obviously that takes off your coordinates. As you can see we're at what is it where are we? Let's click on that. So we're at minus forty, minus six, sixty. And then we can you can check off friends where your friends are when you have ships 
the star names, things like that. That's just your options menu, basically. And again. So if we click all them back on. Show trade route, as you can see, the different colours of lines means different things. So from, from this planet, as you can see by the the way the arrows are travelling down the, the line, it is exporting, this one's exporting to us weapons and minerals and narcotics and things. So I'd usually check that off for now because I'm not trading. So So the planet or the system we want to go to is this one here. Now there might be closer systems than this one to our starting system but this is the one I like. Um, reason is is if we go to power play yeah so this one as you can see Zachary Hudson. Now Zachary Hudson is a power play representative. Uh, every system every major system as you can see they are little red planets but big ones so this is this is a big one this is a little one so everyone they sell vultures now the vultures the ship that I'm actually going to try and get so I know there's one there because it's a Zachary Hutton main system also about this system is is it has a few extraction sites here and also it has a decent starport so this starport sells everything that we need to upgrade our ships it sells everything air rated everything so that's why I usually pick this system it's got a high extraction point it has a hazardous extraction point and also it has a station pretty close to the extraction point which are on this planet there and it sells everything that we need that's why we're going here but to get there we click on a planet and we click this icon here if you click this one that just highlights it click this one it then plots a course so if we go back and as you can see we have our course plotted now it's one two and three jumps so three jumps to get to where we need to be go back again now as we said I'm going straight into fighting so therefore I'm not really bothered about missions or anything like that but if you want to go into the starport services and here you have home repairs the bulletin board contacts outfitting and the universal cartographer now the bulletin board is always something to we'll have a look at as you can see at the top available missions now these th icons mean different different types of missions underneath we've got available but unobtainable in other words we do not meet the criteria for these missions so if I click on this one in red you see that the quantity is 112 so therefore we, un we don't have enough cargo hold and the minimum required trader rank is a dealer so we don't have the the minimum requirement for this mission this one here is a quick one just a little jump and it would earn me two and a half thousand credits if you just started off and you want to go into trading and things like that that's probably a way of making a little bit of money but we're not like, like I said we're not doing that and we'll see these other things later on so we've plotted the course, we're getting ready to leave, so we go to launch. And as I said, here we are, this is the pre-flight check. This is the only time we will have to do the check because we turned the, the pre-flight check off in the systems. So, pitch up. And also this is a good thing as if when you've just rebinded the controls for your joystick, or anything this is a good way to find out whether you need to go back into the options and invert some of the actions of your like y axes and things like that and x axes 
because sometimes if it says roll right and you push right just watch it because sometimes it might say you the roll left might might signal so you know that you'll need to invert that one round it's the wrong way around so just keep an eye on it when you first first do your pre-check flight pre-flight check and as you can see there's a description pops up on the right and it also tells you the buttons as well on the right and once you're finished it'll let you take off so we turn that the pre-flight check off so you don't have to do that every time you leave a station into engines just to make it that bit quicker because at now I cannot boost because I don't have enough power but once the power gets to the top I'll show you again if you watch the engine down in the bottom left bottom, bottom right there we go. again you see the you see your fuel in the bottom right and underneath the fuel you get a mass locked landing gear and cargo scoop now if I put my landing gear down you see the landing gear light come on put that back up again now the one above that mass lock that's if you're too close to stations and things like that once that light's gone off you can charge up your jump drive or frame shift drive, sorry not jump drive That was our first jump. We're gonna... ah. We're gonna scan. Because I set my scanner to fire button two. See what we find. Nothing. Right. We'll line up on our second jump. And I'm not gonna make you watch the other jumps, so I'll see you when we get into the system. LTT LTT 15574 now the station as you can see it was hiding behind the sun so now we've come around the sun we're going to line up with the station and as you can see these are the the orbital rings the white lines so all these white lines are orbital rings and you can see where things are circling so we're going to line up and we're going to fly over there. Right, so as we're getting into close, close in the Hexel port, as you can see, the throttle, which is right of the radar, the throttle indicator is in the blue section. Now that's the man most manoeuvrable part of your throttle. So we're just slowing down until we get to one million meters and then we'll drop in and we'll dock so there you go, we're dropping in and here we are which is the bigger station than what we started with right 
I'm only docking at this station because if we do get blown up, you will have the chance of buying back your ship. But it will be at the last station you docked at. So we're docking here just to save the, the travelling the travelling back. Now, if you pick the mission and you get destroyed before you cash in that mission and lose it, then start again. Just start again. There's no point not starting again. And also we're going into refuel so we might be able to stay out a bit longer. So as you can see my throttle's in the blue which means I'm much more manoeuvrable. Oh. <laughs> also go back out. Unfortunately while talking I've just gained a 400 credit fine because I forgot to ask for permission to dock. So we've got to back away. <laughs> Can't believe I just did that. So, so, asking permission to dock. Come over to the navigational tab, flick over the contacts, now Hexel port and request docking. Docking request granted. There. So we're at as you can see, just above the radar in blue right, we can now go in <laughs> and land on pad 27. And 27, which is right there, right in front of me. I didn't see that there, so we're coming. Landing gear. Down we go. So we're only here for some refueling and to pay that fine. We've got to pay that fine now. Starport services. Refuel all. And to pay the fine, you go to contacts. There you go, fines. <laughs> Confirm. We paid the fine off. And back. So, so I've just nearly lost half my money because I forgot to ask for permission to land, which is stupid. And now, as you can see, in this station, we have a shipyard. Commodities market, shipyard, contacts, and bulletin board again. Like I said, we've only got 500 credits now, so there's no point in going into the shipyard just yet. So I'm going to end it there for now, and we'll jump straight out in the next episode. Hopefully see you there. Bye for now.